In this episode of Local Brew, I'm visiting Bissell Brothers Brewing Company, home of the Substance Ale, a critically acclaimed, dank, highly drinkable IPA that was recently named one of the 100 best beers in the world by Men's Journal. There, I'll talk with brothers Noah and Peter Bissell about how they turned Noah's homebrew into one of New England's most sought-after beers. I will never forget that first time that I had the substance. In its homebrew form, it, it, it blew my mind. Then, they put me to work, filling cans of Bucolia Ale one at a time. All right, the best thing to do is just to start, just to give it a shot. Do so I need to, should I wear some gloves? No, should you're okay. I'm you're okay. okay. Yep. All right, we're just going to do this. Yep, all the way up. So all the way up. Yep. Go ahead and pull it. Pull it forward. Oh, we're off. All right, yeah. bring it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring it yeah. down. It's not bad for a first time, though, so. After that, I'm jumping into the green basket with Sniff. Sniff. Sniff Got gets less it. weird the more you use it, so. <laughs> all right. To hand deliver kegs of Bissell Brothers beer around Portland. We'll make our last stop at the Thirsty Pig in Portland, where I sit down with owner Allison Stevens to talk about her delicious handmade sausages and the Bissell Brothers' early days. Noah's first day was an absolute disaster. We still joke about it. It took him about four hours to write a drink list on one chalkboard. And I was like, great, this kid's great. So let's see how he does with a customer. Like, yeah, let's see what goes from here. And then uh, he was great with the customer. He's a totally different person. He had regulars right off the bat. Yes, it's all about brothers, beer, and sausage in this episode of Local Brew. The craft beer scene in the United States is exploding with over 2,800 breweries. States like Vermont, Oregon, Colorado, and Maine are leading the way in this revolution. With over 50 licensed breweries brewing over 200 beers, Maine is a leader in the craft beer world. I'm Matt Delamater, and I love beer. I'm hitting the road to visit the best breweries in Maine and learn the story behind the brew. I'm going behind the scenes to discover who the brewers are, how their beer is made, and what drives them to create some of the best beer in the country. This is Local Brew. Local Brew is sponsored by The Great Lost Bear, Portland's original craft beer bar serving up over 70 beers on tap daily. Tig Pro, stainless steel fabrication and custom-built systems for the brewing and food processing industries in Portland, Maine. Carter's Cross Country Ski Center, your main cross-country skiing source in Oxford and Bethel, Maine. Cafe Nomad, art, food, coffee, and adventure in Norway, Maine. Wolfgang Man and Beast, American-made leashes and collars for your dog using only the finest American leathers and textiles. The Maine Brew Bus, the official ride of local brew, driving you to drink local since 2012. Emily Delamater Photography, fine art wedding and portrait photography from Portland, Maine. Today I'm back in Portland to check out one of Maine's fastest growing craft breweries, Bissell Brothers Brewing Company. Founded in 2013 by brothers Noah and Peter Bissell, these young entrepreneurs have taken the craft beer world by storm with their flagship IPA, The Substance. This beer is so popular that people have started calling it the next Heady Topper. In case you're not familiar with Heady Topper, it has been named the number one beer in the world by BeerAdvocate.com and is only available at the Alchemist Brewery in Vermont. People drive for hours to get their hands on a case of Heady, and now people are driving hours to Portland to get a case of the substance. 16 ounce cans are sold in four packs at the brewery on Fridays and Saturdays, but if you want to grab a case, you need to get there early because the lines start forming hours before the brewery opens and the beer sells out quickly. What's so remarkable about the substance is the brewmaster himself, Noah Bissell. At just 25 years old, Noah is one of the youngest brewers in the country and he's already making a name for himself. He started brewing beer while he was still in college, including the first version of The Substance. Once his brother Peter had his first taste of that beer, he knew they had something special. I will never forget that first time that I had The Substance. I was just blown, I'd never had anything like it. I'll never forget that moment. I brewed the first batch of like, sort of the seedling of like something kind of like The Substance. Uh, it was kind of based off this uh, recipe I'd found on this podcast. Um, it was, you know, I accidentally doubled the hops, like the, the, the old homebrew story. Oh, I misread it. And, but it, uh, yeah, it turned out good. And so when you when you had that the first time, you were like, we got something now. Yeah. This is, this and is, I mean, the recipe's changed, but I'll never forget that taste of tasting something. I'd, it, it blew my mind. Before starting the brewery, Peter was running his own photography business in Portland. His studio was next door to the Thirsty Pig, which is where he and his friends would hang out after work. Once they decided to start the brewery, Noah moved to Portland and got a job at the Thirsty Pig. A few months later, Peter started working there too, which is where people first started trying Noah's home-brewed beer. 
the pig was sort of the epicenter of the Bissell movement, I'll say. You kind of use that as a place to, to let the consumer get and well, access like, to it a little early on? Or? Exactly. You know, yeah. I'd wear our shirts. And uh, again, it was a, definitely a, a bar populated largely by friends of ours and people in our circles. So, uh, for instance, you know, if we had a batch of, of Noah's Pilot Brews and Home Brews that we had labeled, we'd tell someone, hey, meet a, you know, come into the pig for my shift. that dark alley back there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll send you <laughs> the, I'll give the you back. the beer there. Shady van. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Unlike most breweries, the Bissell Brothers started branding their brewery with a logo, website, and t-shirts. Before they had a physical location or even beer they could sell. It was a bold move in a beer town like Portland which made a lot of people a little skeptical of the beer they would eventually produce. But for the brothers, this was all part of their plan. I was home brewing a lot, and me and Peter had kind of hatched this idea that this is, we were gonna take a stab at opening a brewery. And Peter's um, just eye for aesthetic and eye for marketing was like, yeah, let's throw a, let's throw a brand on these home brews. And, and we weren't giving out swill, you know. We, we, if, if we were gonna put our, our you know, crappy little sticker on a homebrew bottle it was going to be something we were at least I proud of so really, yeah that has some vision there that's cool yeah. what we were really doing was making a promise to ourselves like we're doing this there's no going back i like it because it got really really hard so as it got hard we just kept living the brand and living what we envisioned this to be and it was it, it wasn't to uh, sort of uh, any snake charming stuff or uh or smoke and mirrors it was just us promising ourselves yeah we're doing this this it. is going all the way it takes a lot of hard work to build a brewery and get it into the marketplace. To help get their beer in front of customers, many breweries hire a distributor, which buys the beer from the brewery and sells it in stores, bars, and restaurants. But not the Bissell Brothers. They do things a little differently. We deal directly with all accounts. Uh, there's no middleman. So you self-distribute your beers? Yes. Yep. 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 Using a bright green van they affectionately call the Green Bastard, the Bissell Brothers sell and hand deliver all of the beer they produce. From cans to kegs, they control the process from beginning to end, which offers some unique advantages for them and their customers. We really enjoy getting to know the bar owners and beer buyers and customers at all these spots. You know, we'll, we'll bump into people on the street delivering that they'll just say thank you, and it's awesome, you know? Awesome. And keeping that sort of ear to the streets and that direct connection with uh, what different bars need, what different beer buyers like in terms of delivery time, how much they go through. We value the ability to stay flexible and agile as the beer scene changes and evolves over all else. And a huge part of that is self-distribution. Now, does that limit you at all in terms of what you can do? Because you, you do, it's just you guys and, and a small crew? Yeah, it was tough at first. We were really inefficient when we first started doing it, you know. Turns out there's a lot of planning that comes with self-distribution. It's not really sustainable to say, okay, this guy just called me and needs a keg. I'm going to go drive 20 miles and drop him off this log. It's, it's great because you have the option to do that when the time calls for it, but we were doing that way too much in the beginning and not... Um, when we started getting busy, it was time to batch things up. Yeah, and yeah. Well, are you brewing some beer this morning? Yeah, we're brewing Bucolia today. Um, awesome. Sort of our hoppy red. So, yeah, if you want to show a, me the. Yeah, I love absolutely, it. Absolutely, brother. Thanks, my man. Appreciate yeah, it, Pierre. Absolutely. absolutely. Coming up, I hop on the canning line to help fill cans of Bucolia Ale. Then, I'm helping Sniff load the van with kegs of Bissell goodness. But first, it's time for another round. plus beers on draft. Most of them are from local breweries. Portland, all around the state. If you want main microbrews, the Great Las Paris is the place to be.
Today I'm at Bissell Brothers Brewing in Portland, Maine, where I've met Peter and Noah Bissell and learned a little bit about their brewery. Now, Peter is going to show me how they manually fill each can of glorious Bissell beer. All right, so it starts here at the sticker station. Looks like there's an open seat. Yeah, yeah, this is all for right, you. All right, all Go right, ahead, all right, all pony right. up. And uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. But it's thicker. Uh, technologically advanced dispensers. This is impressive. Uh, yeah. I like this. This is uh, MIT design yeah. right here. I like and uh, we place them with the UPC down, okay. up, and then you put the completed ones here, and Jim will pass them down to. to is the it filler. literally just the sticker is attached? Yep. To... Lots of cans, though. Lots of cans. First test. First test. First test. Right. <laughs> I feel like I'm like crafting arts and crafts day here. Yep. Right. And look at that. See, that's uh. Natural. It's seamless, it looks like it's part of the can, and that's what we're going for, so. I love I'll it. I uh, do, like a do lot 500 of more of yeah, those. Exactly. Right. <laughs> because the Bissell Brothers are a small brewery, they have to label and fill each can by hand. They have plans to purchase a fully automatic canning machine in the future, but for now, it's all hands on deck during canning days. Next, Peter shows me how to fill the cans with beer. So, this is a station that takes finesse. Okay. You okay. pull these, and that's going to release a CO2 purge to purge this of oxygen, because okay. oxygen is bad for beer. Okay. So you'll hear it purge, and then the filler is open, yep. and it's about pulling it down at the right speed. It's okay if it overflows, just like so. Okay, all right. And if you pull them down too fast, the, if you expose the filler, that's not good. Okay. And if you don't pull it down, if you pull it down too slow, you'll get a short fill because this will stay in the can and all displace the beer. Okay. So, of course, that makes sense. All right. The best thing to do is just to start, just to give it a shot. Do so I need to? Should I wear some gloves? No, should you're okay. I'm you're okay. okay. Yep. All right. All right. We're just gonna do this. Yep. All the way up. So all the way up. Yep. Go ahead and pull it. Pull it forward. Oh, we're off. All right. And okay. you'll feel the weight. Yeah. And you, you can. You'll watch oh, yeah. this get cold. Oh, yeah. Bring it down. Yeah. 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 Bring yeah. It down. Yeah. All right. So you, you pull it down too fast because these never want to come out. That's, that's not bad for a first time though, so. They can be filled better. Yeah. <laughs> Each can has to be filled to a certain amount in order to be sellable. The last thing a customer wants is to open a can of beer and find out it's not completely full. To make sure they've filled each can correctly, they weigh them on a scale before sending them to cold storage. The cans that don't get filled all the way are called shorties, which the staff takes home or they give them to friends. So you go up, you get yep. the air. And then, do you let it fill up for a second? Yes. Yep. Okay. I would say start bringing it down now. Hold that, hold that. All right. Ah, so it's the pause at the bottom. Yep. All right, that's the trick. So this is it. This is how you, this is how you get the beer to the masses, yep. right here. Yeah, it's, it's just every, every can. Two at a time. Yep. So when you say handcrafted, you are not, down. you are not lying. Hold. Okay, hold. that's a great fill right there. The one Let's on the right? Yep. Okay, all right, all right. I think Matt got his first real so, uh, sellable can. Okay. We're, gonna, we're gonna weigh it to make sure. Oh boy. All right. Yeah. All right. Oh, All right. Cans. Only okay. took me 18 nice. cans. Two sellable <laughs> cans. Sweet. All right. All right. <laughs> Now that I've mastered the filling station, Peter shows me how to seam the tops of the cans. So we've got beer in the can. We've got the stickers on them. Now uh, we've got them this is the fun part. This is seaming. Okay, let's switch spots. Okay. These two stations working together, that's what it took. That was the learning curve, was to learn how to do this because you can't put your hand through when we're doing a CO2 no, purge. Yeah. Or it'll cut the purge and we, we can't sell it because we have to make sure that. Ah. So it's a, it's a rhythm. So. You won't be fast enough to worry about it right now, but yeah. after we do it, we'll uh, I see what you mean, so I'm slow. Yeah, if you were filling new ones right now, yep. I'd be messing you up. The seamer uses extremely high pressure to secure the lid to the top of the can. It only takes a couple of seconds for each can to be seen properly. I feel like I need some like really, really slow theme music. <laughs> You're just like waiting for me to go. I thought I was doing pretty good, but it didn't take long for me to screw something up. Oh, you blocked it. Oh, see, you didn't, yeah. Oh, yeah. I blocked you out. Yeah. Well, I tried to do like one of these. Yeah. And it didn't help. Cap it, cap it, cap it. Look at all that beer. Oh, boy. I know, I know, oh, man. I know, I know. And you already got one in there. I know. I know. Ouch. It's, it's terrible. Ouch. It's terrible. Had enough? I think I probably should yeah. save your profit margins. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right, this is my last one. Yeah, no problem. Let's get it in. Let's get it done. Thanks, bro. After the cans are filled and seamed, they are washed and weighed by Hester. She weighs each can to make sure it's actually full. 
Then the full cans get packaged into four packs using a special plastic holder. These black tops are called pack tax and you can get a machine to, to do it for you, but we're not that big or classy. So uh, we just put them on by hand, stamp the date on because freshness is a big part of all this and Brothers beers. So that date that's on there, that's the date that it was brewed. That's the date. The date that it was canned. The date that it was canned. Yep. Oh, awesome. Yep. The date, yep. boom. Super fresh. You want to do it? Go for oh, it, brother. Step up. Yeah, I feel like yeah. I'm yeah. stepping. This is fun to watch too when new people do uh, the packaging. It's hard yeah. to watch. Now I have some experience packaging cans from when I visited Baxter Brewing. That time didn't go so well. Right there. Whoa. And then it smashes you in the face when you're not paying attention. That's that's when you screw up. I get it. Let's see if I can do any better with Bissell cans. <laughs> it looks so simple. Yeah. <laughs> I want the click, right? Always. Seriously? You'll know when you pick it up and one pops out. <laughs> you didn't get it, brother. I didn't get it? Nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're in. That's it. Right you're there. in, dude. Ten minutes later. Yeah, man. I'm gonna give that another try. Is there a trick to this, brother? Like it looks like. I mean, I guess so I guess just being strong and oh, stuff. Okay, I see what you're saying. Let's see what's happening. The trick really is to just use your muscles and strength. Scripts. Yeah, if you have none, then you're probably gonna just I, not I, be able I to see, do I see it. What okay, so. yeah. Strength. Get it. Get it. Go, man, beast. I'm not confident myself. All right. I think my job is the sticker guy. I think that's I think that's, that's cool, it. man. All right, I'm gonna let the professionals take over. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate you letting me play in your world for a bit. <laughs> now that the cans are filled, it's time to start loading the van for deliveries. Today, I'll be helping Sniff hand deliver kegs of Bissell beer to bars and restaurants all around Portland. Sniff has spearheaded much of the delivery operation, coming up with efficient routes and making sure every delivery is made on time. So we gotta bring some beer to the people. What, what are we yeah. doing? We're gonna load up the van. Okay. So we, we got 21 kegs. 21 and kegs. And three half barrels, sorry. Whew. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad I did my get stretches get today. Stretches All right, so All right. just Bacolia kegs going in the van. Just right. Bacolia kegs. All right. Let's All, right. Do All right. All of the kegs are stored in this small refrigeration room. We have to pull them out two at a time and load them onto this pallet. We start with these little kegs, also known as six barrels or logs. Each one of these holds about 42 pint-sized beers and weighs roughly 60 pounds. Once the beer is on the pallet, it's just a short trip to the Green Bastard, where all the kegs are loaded for delivery. Okay, so these okay. obviously have to get in here. Each sleeve fits seven. So seven. ultimately, when we ship out, we're going to have three full sleeves, and uh, we'll put the half barrels behind it. But okay. let's, uh, let's start jamming them in. Normally, Sniff loads the van by himself, so he's more than happy to have a little help today. After the logs are loaded, we have to load the half barrel kegs. These are the big boys that you've probably seen in a bar or restaurant. They hold about 124 pint sized beers and weigh roughly 160 pounds. Uh, that's cool, that's fine. Because this is all the rest that has to go in. That's it. That's it? Yeah, yeah. That's it. Unlike the logs, these half barrels get loaded into the side of the van. It's definitely a two person job and quite a workout. I hope they plan on paying me in beer later. I don't know how Sniff does it. Coming up, Sniff and I hit the road to hand deliver kegs of Bissell beer to the masses. Then I'm headed to the Thirsty Pig to talk with owner Allison Stevens about two of my favorite things, sausages and beer. But first, it's time for another round. The Maine Brew Bus, Maine's original brewery tour company, is a fun and unique way to visit craft breweries in Maine. Hop on board and experience our all-inclusive tours of Maine craft breweries, distilleries, wineries, meaderies, and even coffee roasters. Leave the driving to us while you enjoy behind-the-scenes tours, local snacks, trivia, and of course, beer. Voted number one activity in Portland, Maine on TripAdvisor, the Maine Brew Bus is the best way to visit craft breweries in Maine. Check out our schedule and book your tickets now at themainebrewbus.com. The Maine Brew Bus, the official ride of local brew TV, driving you to drink local. Today I'm at Bissell Brothers Brewing, where I help can some beer and load kegs into their self-distribution van with Sniff. Now, we're hitting the road to hand deliver kegs of Bucolia Ale around Portland. Our first stop is the Great Lost Bear to drop off a couple of logs. I just lumberjack these things. If I got one, and you can distribute that weight over your shoulder and it kind of makes it a little bit nicer, You're a don't smoother. it? Yeah, don't it? 
we drop them off in their walk-in cooler, which as you can see, is already loaded with lots of Minecraft beer. After that, we swing by Salvage Barbecue in Portland to deliver a half beer. You wanna get it or you want me to get it? Let's do it, man. You put me to work, right? Yeah. Do it to you. Luckily, it started downpouring as soon as we got there, which made this grueling work all the more fun. Thankfully, they only needed one keg. Next, we head to the Thirsty Pig to drop off another half barrel. Like most restaurants in Portland, the building the Thirsty Pig sits in is very, very old and wasn't designed to be a craft beer bar, which means their keg cooler is in the basement. The only way into the basement is going down this steep, narrow pathway. While I'm comfortable slinging a keg here or there, I'm certainly no professional. Sniff generously offers to take over for me. We're going in here? Yep, yeah, we're going in there. This is creeping me out, man. Wait behind the door. On the other side. We don't come back. Come on, <laughs> I love it. All right, so we're going out here. Yeah. So this is this is your home turf, huh? Yeah, yeah. This is uh, this is where it all began for most of us in the craft beer world of Portland. In addition to Noah and Peter, Sniff and Hester also worked at the Thirsty Pig before working for Bissell Brothers, and Patrick was a known regular too. After we drop off the keg, I say goodbye to Sniff. All right, my man, I think right, this is my dude. last Thank stop. Thank you so much, man. You Sniff. did great. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah, yeah, buddy. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, see dude. you, man. Later. Awesome. The Thirsty Pig sits in the heart of Portland's Old Port and is known for their handmade sausages and large selection of main craft beers. They like to keep things simple, which is why you'll only find 10 different sausages on their menu at any given time. The flavors range from barbecue chicken to Thai chili and Lithuanian, all of which are made in-house and are delicious. And they have 10 tap lines almost exclusively filled with beers and ciders from Maine and New England. The Pig was established in 2010 by Allison Stevens, who was originally from upstate New York, but traveled to Portland a lot for her job as a restaurant consultant. She soon fell in love with Portland and decided to move here and open her own restaurant, catering to her passion for handcrafted food and beer. Sausage has always been a passion of mine, one of my favorite foods, and I really wanted to nail it down because it's so regional and you have to yeah. have like the right ingredients and Maine has so many great options. Um, I was able to work with local farmers and local people and, oh, cool. and get in on that. So went with sausage and beer because um, beer is my passion. Absolutely. So, and uh, so they just came together. We had the logo all designed before we even had the name ready and that's it, awesome. just, it was alive before it was even made. That's so, so cool. This, so you're like your metal sign, who made that? Tigpro that does a lot of the welding for the local breweries oh, no um, wanted to do a little bit more of an artistic project. Mm. They came up with that design and welded it um, from our original logo and it looks awesome. I think it's one of the coolest signs in the It looks now. really, really cool. It's, it's a, it really stands out when you're walking up the street. Yeah. I think it's awesome. If you want to visit the place where Bissell Brothers truly started, look no further than the Thirsty Pig. It provided the foundation for Noah and Peter to work out their idea for a brewery and cut their teeth in the craft beer world. Like most new endeavors though, things didn't start out so smoothly. Noah's first day was an absolute disaster. We still joke about it. <laughs> um, we do a trial interview here and kind of like see how it goes. And I don't like to be on them because I, people get nervous. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Noah was so nervous, it took him about four hours to write a drink list on one chalkboard. <laughs> And I was like, great, this kid's great. So let's see how he does this with the customer. Gonna, like, yeah, let's see what goes from here. And yeah, then uh, yeah. he was great with the customer. He's a totally different person. Awesome. Had regulars right off the bat. No kidding. And then he was having so much fun that Peter jumped on board too. It started um, working? In part time. No kidding. Along with his photography and everything. And we were able to work around his schedule. And so then they were both here. So when they came to you and said, hey, we're out of here. We're going to go start. A it wasn't a we're out of here. It was, um, it, they started to work on the business plan and I yep. you know, got to read some of the revisions as they were working on that. And then they started presenting it to um, our clients, our regulars. No kidding. And a lot of our regulars are their backers. Oh, that's so cool. That's um, which was really cool because they believed in them from just spending genuine time with them here at the bar. And now we're drinking their beer in here. your awesome bar. Super fun. And, and is it, it seems like it's, is it, is it one of the popular beers it's that you sell? It's the best selling beer we have. That's pretty fantastic. That's yeah. cool. And, they, and to have the history of the fact that they were behind the bar or they were here selling them, that's really, really cool. I love it. Well, cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thank Thanks you so for much, coming Allison. in. Allison had to get back to work but she was nice enough to send over some samples of her delicious house-made sausages for me to try. So this is what we got. We got a little barbecue, a barbecue sausage. We got some hot Italian sausage. We have some Thai. We have some Lithuanian style sausage. We have some spicy Caribbean, and we have some apple. I'm just gonna dive right in. Got a little pickles, got a little bread. Let's just go right down the line here. You know, let's just do this. Look at this, man. This is fresh, homemade, big bite. Let's do this. Oh. 
Man, that sauce just tastes so good in my mouth. I tell you what, luckily I got this Bissell right here because nothing goes better with this amazing sausage than these guys, man. While I was enjoying this amazing meal, Peter showed up to explain what makes these sausages so damn good. But you gotta help me out, man. Dude, this food is insane. Sausage is a food that I think a lot of people take for granted because you're not getting it fresh and house made a lot of places. You're getting it packaged at the supermarket. Yep. And the taste difference between a packaged sausage, even sort of a high end artisanal one, between that from the supermarket and sausage that's ground in house is so, so good. So this is ground and made right here. Yeah, oh yeah, everything. Yep. How yep. cool is it to see your beer being being served with the food that you used to serve and used to work at? It? It's still, uh, it's, it's still, even after all these months, it's still surreal. That first night that we did our launch party here, it was to walk in and see the tap and see everyone had glasses and it was, uh, it was something, man, I'll never forget it. Dig in here, dig in with oh, me. Man. Let's just eat something, let's just do this. <laughs> Do you have a favorite? Catch him with a the boat. There's Thai? Mm -hmm. Thai. Uh, yeah. They're legit. This is amazing. It's so cool because there's not there's there's no other place that sells sausage only, right? It's amazing. This is the thing. You know, you, you craft beer and sausage. sausage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's, sausage. that's what you're all about. It's not a menu with 30 items on it. Right. Um, it's a few things done really well, uh. made fresh every day. And you know, we when I was working there we would run out of sausage from time to time, but I was fine telling people that, like, oh, we're out of this particular sausage today. It's because it sold fast and we only right. made so much. We're not, there's no infinite stockpile of frozen sausage. Exactly. Here, you you know? gotta make it. Somebody's oh. gotta go back and make it. No, I love it. Peter, this has been an awesome day. They drink your beer, come here, enjoy this food, meet these great people. It's just been a blast. After we finished this delicious meal, I noticed some people drinking Bissell beers at the bar. I head over to check it out. I'm Matt. Hey Matt. Bill. Bill. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. you. And this is my wife, Carolyn. 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 Nice to meet you guys. Nice you're, you're, you're in town enjoying some fine craft beer, I see. Oh, oh yes, yeah, absolutely. You're little Bissell Brothers? Me too. I love it. Cheers here. Thank you Cheers. very much. I love it, I love it. Where are you guys from? New York. New York. New York. New York, New York. New York. And you're drinking the substance. I, I love this. I love this. Nice hoppy, little floral in the background. Look at you. I love it. Oh, that's perfect. I, I agree. I couldn't agree with you more. As a hop lover, do you, do you think it stacks up? I think it. I think it's it's a nice balanced hop. It's basically has a good finish to it. Great beer. Great drink. So what it, what is it about craft beer that makes you guys fanatics driving all over the East Coast? It, it just started with a couple of good uh, microbrews that we used to go to, mm -hmm. and then beers have become like how wines are, where there's just the slight difference. Differences and, and you find the, the flavors and the and the qualities you love, and then you you're looking for more of that. So absolutely, and you can come to a cool city and hang out, and, you know, and, and, and have a few beers, pop around town, and really yeah. enjoy some craft. Road yeah. trip into a couple of nice uh, breweries, and and it makes a weekend. So. I love it. Well, thank you guys for talking. Me. Cheers, man. Very nice meeting you, Matt. Nice, nice to meet you too. guys. Love Maine. I think I'm ready for another one. Mm. Come into the Great Lost Bear on Thursday nights for our craft beer showcase event where we feature a different local craft brewery each week. It's been another amazing day here in Portland. I got to learn the story behind one of the fastest growing breweries in Maine, Bissell Brothers Brewing. There I talked with Peter and Noah Bissell about their passion for handcrafted beer. Life is too short to spend it not doing something not only that you love but that you create. You know, this is what we're doing with our lives. Yes, it's a business. You know, yes, there are parameters that we need to fall into, right. but this is how we're spending our lives because we're only around for a short time. And I don't want to look back with any regrets. Absolutely, so. amen to that. Then, Peter showed me how they can Bissell beers, two at a time, on their manual canning line. So now, like, you're spilling a lot of beer there. Like, you, how much beer do you spill, or is you just doing that and make you feel better? Um, huh. well, to, to run, this, we just need to go. So this is like, none of this is really how it would be when we're actually working. So when you're going, you're just going. You're just um, going. So this is kind of all for the, for the cameras. For so. Yeah, for yeah. And I got to see how much work goes into self-distributing beer from Sniff, who wasn't afraid to put me to work. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah, yeah, you're getting there. <laughs> this, is, this is as smooth as Sniff does it every day. That's right. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I got 
cool. Nah, it's cool. I'm just gonna knock it over, man. It's all right. This is how <laughs> then I sat down with the owner of the Thirsty Pig, Allison, to learn about her passion for sausage and craft beer. I had just come from opening a brewery in Winter Park, Florida. Oh, wow. And um, watching just growing a craft scene in a place where it wasn't really existing, which is, I loved the energy and I loved the people I was working with. And, and then I knew when I came to Maine, I wanted to sell all Maine beers um, because those are the people that are in the community. I wanted to be in business with them. I wanted them to come here and eat and hang out with them and learn more about them um, and just be a part of the fabric. Yes, it was a day full of hops, hard work, and outstanding craft beer from one of Maine's best microbreweries. Bissell Brothers Brewing. Local Brew is sponsored by The Great Lost Bear, Portland's original craft beer bar serving up over 70 beers on tap daily. Tig Pro, stainless steel fabrication and custom built systems for the brewing and food processing industries in Portland, Maine. Carter's Cross Country Ski Center, your main cross country skiing source in Oxford and Bethel, Maine. Cafe Nomad, art, food, coffee, and adventure in Norway, Maine. Wolfgang Man and Beast, American-made leashes and collars for your dog using only the finest American leathers and textiles. The Maine Brew Bus, the official ride of local brew, driving you to drink local since 2012. Emily Delamater Photography, fine art wedding and portrait photography from Portland, Maine.